All right, Sergeant Turner, can you hear me? Yes, sir, you're good. Copy that, okay. Chief, how you doing today, sir? Hey, not too bad, but how are you? I'm pretty good, sir. Thanks for being on with us. All right, so let me, let me start off with a question for everyone. Um, you know, are you writing with the, are you writing uh, the bullets that reflect your current rank um, or the rank you hope to be promoted for? So the rank for uh, the title for this seminar is write for the rank that you want. Um, and that's actually based off of a direct quote from Chief Goldstrom. Um, so his message presents insight on how your writing skills should progress as you advance in, in your Air Force career. So be ready to take plenty of notes because I know that there's about to be a lot of great information. Um, and also feel free to post your questions to the Zoom chat. I'll be taking a look at those and we'll make sure uh, to get those questions to Chief. So without further ado, Chief, um, thank you very much again for being on with us. Um, and the floor is yours, sir. Our Air Force Recruiting Service Command Chief, Chief Master Sergeant Goldstrom. Thank you. Hey, hey teammates, thanks so much. And uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I, that's, uh, that's probably really nice of y'all. Uh, yeah, I was sorry that we missed the opportunity to do this, do this back in October, but uh, you know, technology is what it is. And as a former comm NCO, uh, I totally and fully understand that. Uh, but it's great to be on with you guys today. And uh, hopefully we'll spend some time. I think we have an hour. Uh, but uh, my, my goal here is to really only talk for 15 or 20 minutes and then we'll kick it over and just kind of open discussion questions and answers. Uh, and what I want to do is I've got, a, I've got a list of things that I just want to cover very, very quickly. And I'm going to give you a quick slide presentation. And I, don't get it twisted. It's, 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 it's actually some good slides. Um, when I had the chance to sit a supplemental promotion board uh, back in 2015, um, you know, it, it was it was an experience for me uh, to be able to to be there as a board member uh, to score records and to share that information. Now, the the, the slide I'm going to show you is from the FY20 Master Sergeant Promotion Board. Now, the data is the same. It's essentially how the board works. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may have not. Uh, but I'm going to share this uh, with you, and then we'll go back to the list of questions. Hopefully, you'll see. Uh, the importance uh, and maybe what I was trying to get at when I go through my list of things here. And this is kind of freehand stuff. We'll probably just develop probably over time as we're talking. Um, and keep in mind that I'm coming at this from a very um, generic perspective. And when I say generic, I mean large Air Force perspective. We can, we can focus in a little bit tighter on uh, recruiters specifically. And we can focus in tighter on uh, the Air Force individual grades specifically, if you would like. But please know that this is coming from a institutional Air Force perspective. Okay, uh, so, and that's the slide presentation. And then my notes specifically are just my own. So uh, the first thing, and we, we've already touched on it, right? When you're writing your EPRs, when you're writing your goal sixes, when you're writing your decorations, Make sure that you're writing for the grade that you aspire to be, not the grade you currently at, right? So what do I mean by that? Um, you know, if, if you're a tech star, writing a tech star DPR, then I'm probably not going to promote you to master sergeant, right? If you're a tech star writing an EPR that reads like a master sergeant, I'm probably going to promote you, right? And when I say me, I mean the Air Force. Uh, I might give you that generous score. Now, here's the thing. I want you to maintain integrity. I want you to make sure um, you tell me what your job is, how you did it, and what impact did you have, right? So that's the second point to remember. What job did you have? How did you do it? And what impact did it have? Uh, I see a lot of time where people are trying to write bullets that are probably stretching the truth, maybe speeding a little bit. If you're spending more than five minutes trying to write one bullet, it's probably not there, just to be honest with you. Right? You're, you're probably searching for something that's not there. Just keep that in mind when you're writing bullets. Now, when you write your bullet, when you write your EPR as a whole, and take, take this from a, a board member's perspective, um, you're creating a word picture, right? Um, now, what, what I always tell people is your strongest EPR bullet should always reside with the highest level endorser, okay? So if you are a master sergeant competing for senior master sergeant and you come up to the AFRS auditory stratification, your most impactful bullet, most significant award 
wherever it is, should reside in General Thomas as well. And then you work your way backwards from there. You're essentially creating a word picture within your EPR. Because as a board member, I'm looking for that last line first. It's the hook, right? I'm looking, and I'll get into that here in just a second. But um, uh, your, your strongest award, your strongest operational bullet, your, your most significant level of award um, should reside in that senior raider's uh, uh, the thing that's important to remember on that is if I don't read anything else about you, this is where you want that to reside. If I don't read anything else in the report, this is what I want to see. You're the AFRS's number two master sergeant. You had this significant operational impact, which led to this award, or which led to this organizational result, right? If I don't read anything else, that's what you want in that last EPR bullet because as a board member, that's the first bullet I'm looking at. And that's why I'm looking for the hook. Right? And then so on average, your your record is going to get looked at on the promotion board for, for about three to five minutes. That's the time you have to make an impact on the board member. So if it's not there in that first line that I read, the hook's probably not there. Right? So again, what am I looking for in that last line? I'm looking for if the strat if there's a stratification there, I'm looking for it there. If there's a significant operational bullet, right? You as a tech sergeant filled in as a flight chief, normally E7 position, or you as an E7 filled in as a production superintendent, normally a E8 position, that's where I want to see that. If you have a significant award, I want, that's where I want to see that, because that's the hook. That's going to require me to be just a little bit deeper into that promotion record. Um, think of your EPRs and your decorations as a system of records. Okay, now I'll tell you, when we get into the slideshow here in just a little bit, um, there's a little uh, pop-up, a little example of how the screen pops up, right, when you're scoring packages, and it's your, it's your decorations, it's your EPRs, and then it's your career data brief. And that's what the board has in front of them. And uh, I'll get into how I review them, but um, what you want to do, your part, is you want to make sure that that system of record is current and accurate all right so normally what i did when i was a young junior nco is on the first of every month i would go in and i would check my surf get all the data on my surf packet right uh before the electronic uh records met the boards you can request is at and as is and is at and, and you can request an as is or an as meant promotion record okay some of our chiefs out there See Chief Thompson, I see you out there. Uh, some of us did that, right? I would write a PC an email and say, hey, I would like to review my as is promotion record. And they would send me a copy in the mail of my no kidding physical promotion record. And in there were all of my EPR, copies of all my PRs, copies of all my decorations, uh, all the documentation was going to meet that board. It was an as is record. And then after the promotion board, I would ask for an as met record, right? So I would give the exact copy physical copy of what met the board, all right? Now that's done electronically now. You can get in through Prada and see what's in there as well. And we'll get into that in a second. But think of your EPRs, your decorations as a system of record. You wanna make sure you're getting in there and uh, checking all that. Okay, so that's housekeeping on your part. When you're writing your bullets. Now you've heard, some of you have heard me speak. Um, you probably have heard me reference the National Defense Strategy, the NDS, or the book that, are, that really it's on our SEAC's um, uh, reading list, uh, the kill chain, right? Uh, and it comes down to the NDS, National Defense Strategy. And what, what is the National Defense Strategy, right? It's joint, it's readiness, it's lethality, it's alliance, it's developing teams, and it's in innovations, right? So whenever, as, as much as you can in your records, you want to talk about innovation. You want to talk about alliance. You want to talk about lethality. You want to talk about jointness. And I think I, I need you to think big picture in these opportunities. Okay, if you are a recruiter working in one of our um, uh, armed forces recruiting centers, right, and you go out and you do an event with the Navy, I want you to write about it. If you go out and do an event with the Marine Corps and the Army, I want you to write about it. Okay, because that's jointness from where you're sitting right now, right? Um, innovation. Lord knows over the last nine months, it doesn't look that up and end anytime soon COVID has helped us in the in the realm of innovation right we've had to get better 
at what we do in the virtual form people. That's all innovations. I need you guys to write about those things. Um, okay, so this is um, this next one. The same panel that's reviewing your record uh, is you're reviewing your record for your entire AFS scene, right? So if you are back back and forth, if you are a scene troop, this panel is, if you're an HVAC airman, this panel is reviewing all of the HVAC records. So comparatively for our recruiters, there is one panel that's reviewing all of our recruiter records. Why is this important? If you guys start sharing bullets, if you guys start copying and pasting bullets, um, the board's gonna see that. And you're not gonna get any love for those outstanding things you may or may not be doing, okay? So I need to make sure you're not copying and pasting bullets, sharing bullets, because the board's Can everyone hear me? I, I think I got muted for a second. Okay, perfect. Um, so the same, the same panel is going to review those records. Um, okay, so if you're competing for promotion as an ADR, which most of you are, um, I need you to keep in mind that not all of the not all of the uh, reviewers on your board are going to be ADRs. Okay, you might have a TI and MTL on your board, or you might have a um, a PME instructor. And in MFA Rena Center NCO, reviewing packages on your board. Why is this important? Because I've been in this organization now for the last three months and uh, in the process of currently reviewing EPRs right now. There's a lot of sp recruiting specific jargon that we're using out there that's not going to resonate with a lot of board members. They're not going to know what you're talking about. Board members don't know what a blue suit is. Board members aren't going to know what an NEC is. I need to make sure, I need you to make sure that you're writing your EPRs in a plain language format that a board is going to understand, okay? Um, so I need to make sure that you're, that, that you're, you're tracking on that. Um, okay, so this is a, this is a Tony Goldstromism, something that I, I, I find is a great pet peeve. Hulk smash bullets. You guys know what I mean by Hulk smash bullets? Right, where you try to cram three accomplishments into one EPR bullet with no clear impact, that's a Hulk smash bullet. It doesn't do anything for you. Okay, your bullet should have a clear accomplishment, impact, and if you can write about it too, a result. Accomplishment, impact, result. Okay, very basic NCO Academy type stuff there. Education bullets. One thing to remember when you're writing about your own education, I'm proud of you. I love the fact that you're getting a degree. But I also want, I want to know what you're doing to inspire other airmen to get their education. Or how did you take that MBA class and apply it to your unit, that marketing class, whatever. And apply it to your units. I need you to think about that too. Um, keep a living log of your EPR accomplishments, right? Things that you've done, things that you're working on. Keep that living log going because it's, it's great to go back to um, uh, when you're writing your EPRs. Almost done, guys, with this list, and we'll go to the slides. Um, no fluff. Fluff is wasted space. Don't say great NCO because I already know you're a great NCO. I can see that by your markings on your on your EPR. Okay. The, those flowery, colorful words that lead into your bullet or finish your bullets don't do a thing for you. It's wasted space. You, you've got more meat. You can, you've got some more meat on the bone that you can use uh, by not using that fluff. And then lastly, always thing to remember, and we're talking a lot about promotion right now. Promotions are great, but teamwork and camaraderie are, are, are better. All right. If you're constantly chasing that stripe, I promise you, you're going to be alone and miserable. All right, so promotions are great. They recognize you for the things that you have done and the potential of the things that you have to do. Uh, but if you find yourself constantly trying to chase that stripe, you will find yourself alone and frustrated. All right, um, who's got the slides that I asked uh, to push? Okay, perfect. Uh, if you can go back one. Okay, it's okay, we can leave it here. Um, all right, so these are the slides that uh, after a promotion board, the board members can take back and talk about. So we're kind of we're kind of tied to this uh, non-disclosure agreement. There, we can't disclose the board proceedings um, specifically, uh, but we can talk about how the board went. All right, so this is not the board that I sat on. This is this last year's master sergeant promotion board, um, but it's it's the same information. So. I don't know how many of you have seen this before, 
Um, I hope it's not the, it is not the first time you've seen it, but uh, we'll step through it. Uh, but this is the authority of the board, some of the instructions that, that go into the board. And then uh, what was read to us with Chief Staff of the Air Force formal charge. All right, okay, go ahead, go to the next slide. All right, so this is how the boards are, are parsed out, right? Uh, in this board particularly, there were uh, one to six support panels. Um, and within each panel, they would review specific AFSC, right? So the same two chiefs and one colonel are all going to see all of the eight R packages or all of the three Delta 100 packages or all of the two Echo 3X packages, right? So each two colonels and one chief, excuse me, Two chiefs and one colonel will review all pack, all the records for that one AFSC. So you can see in this case, there were uh, up to six support uh, panels. There were seven to nine operations, 10 medical, 11 to 14 maintenance. Let's go ahead and go to the next, uh, next slide, please. Okay, you can see how the, seven, the six support panels and uh, the different operations panels, that's how many records each panel review. Okay, so when I talk about the hook, when I talk about structuring your record so, so the panel can read it, read it easily and they know what you're talking about, if you look at, for example, support panel one, they reviewed 1,700 records. They reviewed 1,700 records. How is your record going to stand out? That's one thing I need you to think about. All right, when I talk about writing in plain language, Make sure you have the hook. Put your strongest EPR bullet as the last bullet in the senior rated block. That's why that's important. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, it's more of the same stuff. Next slide. All right. So this was the eligibility criteria. This stuff that they talked about, talked to us up front, right? They talked to us about the PCOT date, they talked about data rank, total active fair military service date. Uh, the projected date of separation, you know, retirements, that was something that was in there. Uh, not for my board specifically, but for this board in an higher tenure. Go ahead and go to the next slide. All right. So this is this is how our um, our our panel went, right? Um, so they went over for us what the senior NCO selection record was going to look like. Uh, then they talked about talked to us about the full person concept. There's a little slide later on that. We'll talk about that, the scoring scale. But most importantly was the training session, the trial run. What they gave us was previously scored records. And then we sat down and we talked through the records. How do we read this? How do we how do we sort through this information? How do we uh, assign these different scores to them? And we did a training session, right? So that was in the name of training, consistency, and transparency, right? So that was something that I found to be very comforting when we had the chance to do that. Go to the next slide. Okay, so when I'm sitting there, this is what pops up, right? This is what this this is you in the board's eyes. Okay, uh, on the left where all where the last five EPRs, in the middle were the decorations, and on the right was the the data brief. Okay. So the data brief didn't, doesn't really tell me a whole lot. There's a lot of data on there that's masked. Um, it kind of gave me a quick duty history, gave me your tapping's date, gave me your date of rank. Um, I would glance at that pretty quickly, but I really wouldn't spend too much time on that. Where I spent the most amount of time was the decorations, right? Because remember, um, I only get to see your last five EPRs on the board, the last five years worth of EPRs on the board. I get to see every single one of your decorations. Um, so this is why it's important when you write decorations, write them like a story. Write your decorations like a story. Pick your three strongest bullets out of your EPRs and write one decoration with them. And tell me the story. Don't be choppy. Make sure it flows really nice. You know, I was just telling our lieutenant out here who's a casual lieutenant working for Colonel Macklemore. Um, a lot of times I will read the decoration to myself out loud in the office to make sure it flows well. Right? I want to make sure it flows well. And then uh, lastly is your EPR. So this was this is where I was spending also a significant amount of time. But again, I'm looking for that hook, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that little arrow to the right. I'm gonna go to the back of the page first. And I'm gonna read your report backwards, right? Because if I don't see the hook, I'm probably not spending a whole lot of time on it, right? Now the strat by itself is not a hook. What does the strat say about you? That's the hook, right? I've 
got to see your most significant operational impact. I've got to see any, the most significant award that you have. Now, in recruiting, we have a great culture and a great inventory and a great recognition and incentives program. Okay. I'll tell you, um, if you take that and you compare it to um, the, the Line Air Force, or if you return back to force with all of these um, recruiting accolades, I will tell you that most NCOs, and I will tell you the most significant two awards that I ever earned as, as an airman in our Air Force was a first sergeant of the year award and an NCO of the year for the 355th Wing at Davis Moment. Probably the two things I'm the most proud of, but I can tell you, um, those were career awards. And there were probably 40 of similar awards that I never, I never earned for one, right? So most airmen are going to highlight those one or two awards through the course of a reporting period, right? Or five EPRs. So why is this important? We have this great incentive culture uh, in recruiting service, your silver badges, your gold badges, your blue suit, um, your EA, you know, your flight chiefs. We, we've got a lot of outstanding recognition in our organization. I need you guys, when you're writing your report, to use your most significant one and put that in for a senior rater full. Okay? Is everyone is everyone clear on that? I don't know. I can say it louder. I don't think I can say it any clearer. Your most, your most significant award needs to be in your senior rater's pool. Okay, next slide. Oh, um, yeah, okay. This, so uh, this just zooms in on the um, on the pop. Go back one slide. I'm sorry. All right, so the last thing, so this is the scoring scale on the very bottom. We'll get back into that in the middle in a minute. But if I say, you know, hey, I put a six on that record, I moved on, that's the lowest score I can give that record um, on a promotion board. Okay, so it goes from six to 10 and half point increments. We'll talk about that, get that again here in just a little bit. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, decorations. Next slide. And this is the, uh, the data brief. Next slide. All right, whole person concept. This is what I'm looking for in a record. Okay, so your EPRs and your or your training records, and we don't have really training records in your in, on the list side unless you're a student. And that's textbook type stuff. That's where I'm going to find your performance. So we these are the factors we're looking at when we're looking at a promote, uh, promotion record: performance, professional confidence, leadership, job responsibility, breadth of experience, specific awards, and education. Okay. So where do we look for those? In your, in your EPRs, I'm going to find the performance. Um, in your professional competence, I'm going to look for your expertise within your specialty, right? Uh, for leadership, I'm going to look to see how many uh, how many airmen, uh, civilians uh, you've supervised. Uh, are you at a staff function? Are you doing staff level work? Because there's a lot to be said for that type of opportunity. Let me put a pin in uh, leadership and supervisor uh, real quick, okay? This is something I've been talking a little bit, talking about a little bit in these last couple of weeks. For our tier one recruiters, now I've often I've heard over the course of the last three months that our tier one recruiters don't have the opportunity to supervise. I counter that with um, think about the applicants that you have in depth. If you're a tier one recruiter, in the conversations that I've had to date, you've got about eight to fifteen applicants in your depth. Okay, you are supervising eight to fifteen applicants. Use that information. Use it. You are leading your supervisor. I will tell you, Sergeant Simmons, my recruiter, you've heard me talk about him before. Uh, I remember he led me. He coached me uh, while I was in depth. And I was in depth for a year. I, I entered debt the, the summer before my senior year of high school. And I did not leave for basic training until November after I graduated high school. So he had me over a year. And that was a lot of depth calls I had a chance to, to go to. A lot of time talking with Sergeant Simmons that I had a chance to talk to him. I tell you, I remember he came to one of my, my high school football games. He told me, hey, Tony, you're taking too many hits. Don't need you to take all those unnecessary hits. Don't need you getting hurt before basic training. Uh, I took my girlfriend at the time to a dev call. He's like, eh, make sure you're make sure you're you're doing right by that relationship. You know, I took a couple friends to a dev call. He said, hey, you're not hanging out with the right people. You know, that, that recruiter, Sergeant Simmons, coached me through my senior year of high school. A lot of our tier one recruiters are doing the same thing. All right. So I just, I'll take that pin off of leadership. Uh, job responsibility, scope, level, and exposure. All right, so we talk a lot about the level of responsibility you have as recruiters or staff in the Air Force Recruiting Service, where you are, your level of um, level of responsibility, scope of responsibility. Okay, breadth of experience. 
where, what, where, where, what, and when. Okay, so we can find various levels of breadth of experience within recruiting. But where this is really, really important is if you are a recruiter and you return to Forbes, you have breadth of experience having been a recruiter, right? If you are back in your primary seat, that's where that's important, right? So that's uh, when we talk about airmen that have held an eight series AFSC and they go back to their primary FSCs, they promote at a much, acceler a much more accelerated rate than their peers that have not had an eight series AFSC. Now don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to push you all back to force. We need a lot of you to stay in recruiting, all right? But that's a benefit of being in this type of assignment. If you are in recruiting and you become a career recruiter or you're already a career recruiter, we have to find ways to expand your breadth of experience. How do we do that? Staff functions, either here in San Antonio, being a, a MEPS liaison, a, the, the number of different opportunities that we have, an instructor in the schoolhouse. Think of that for a second. You're already a recruiter. If I can get you to be a recruiter in the schoolhouse, you're expanding your breadth of experience as a recruiter by being an instructor in the schoolhouse. You guys follow me on that one? Yeah, I got some good nonverbals on that one. Um, all right, so specific achievements, already talked about decorations and education. Already talked about that. Let me let me add just another thing. Um, the Air Force wants you to get your an associate's degree. I don't think that that is a. I think that's pretty clear. Um, the Air Force wants you to get a bachelor's degree. The Air Force going want you to get your bachelor's degree in your primary field uh, of occupation, right? Um, why is this important? If you are a services airman, I don't need you getting a criminal justice bachelor's degree, right? It, that's not the Air Force. The board's not going to give you any love for that. Uh, if you get a master's degree, a graduate degree, you can get a graduate degree in any field, the Air Force will give you love for it. But try to, if you're pursuing an um, a undergraduate degree, and you're recruiting, for example, you want to go for business, you want to go for marketing, you want to go for human resources, you want to go for one of those types of things, just for an, as an example. All right, next slide, please. All right, these, these are the, the scoring scales, right? So... Uh, seven and below was below average, 7.5 was average, 8, 8.5 was above average, and 9 to 10 was outstanding. So I'll tell you, the board that I sat on, in my head, everyone started off with a 7.5, all right? And you went up or down from there, all right? If your record came to me, you had markdowns, no promotion statement, you had an article T in your record, uh, you PCS without a decoration commensurate with your grade, you were probably going to get a six, and I was going to move on from your record. I'm probably going to spend three minutes or less on your record. All right. If you got a hook in your record, makes me reach a little bit more. You're 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 moving up to that eight at eight point five. All right. If that hook is there, if you've got a stratification, significant award, uh, you're looking at at nine nine point five. I rarely, I don't think I gave one ten. I don't think I ever gave one ten. Um. So. Uh, that's the rating scale, right? And that's what I was looking for. Uh, why is this important? So one, you probably heard the term split, a split on a board. If there was a scorer that was more than 1.5 between two board members, that was considered a split. And you had to talk through that split. What do you see? What do I see? Why Why are we two points or more um, different on this record, All right? So that, that kind of, you can put some, uh, some faith and confidence that, um, you don't have one board member scoring extra hard and one board member scoring lenient. It's all going to be within 1.5 of each other. All right, next slide. All right. Uh, okay, so splits, I just talked about this. Next slide. All right, this was the trial run. So, uh, as I said, when we met, we were given a set of records. Uh, we scored them indiv individually, and then we had a chance to talk about them to kind of set a baseline for ourselves on where we were uh, through that process. Next slide. Okay, I've talked about all this. Next slide. All right, so this is one thing to remember. It doesn't really affect recruiting, but this is back in the, uh, the line Air Force. So you've got, uh, we, we will always promote against vacancies, right? So if we if we need 100 mass starts, we will promote 100 mass starts. Congressionally, we are mandated uh, no more than 1% of uh, the force can be E9 and 3% uh, at E8. So I think that's widely known uh, with all, all of our formation. Um, in this case, and what they talked about in this FY20 Master's Art and Board, 
uh, there were increased promotion opportunities for war fighting and mission critical stress specialty, right? The PJs probably got extra stripes. Your um, combat controllers probably got extra stripes. EOD, um, sensor operators, they might have pulled a couple extra stripes. Where do they get these stripes? Less stressed peripherals, right? So maybe some of the medical peripherals, maybe some of the maybe, maybe security forces, you know, whatever. They, they might have pulled these AFSCs from other AFSCs. Um, I don't think ARs are impacted in this regard. And then it's always the best qualified that get that gets promoted. Okay, next uh, next slide. Okay, uh, go ahead and advance one more. All right, so this is what this slide's telling you, and I hated when this happened, okay? Absolutely hated it when this happened. So what you're looking at right now is the raw scores of three board members, right? Um, and then um, the records within those scores and uh, the, and the cumulative records, okay? What I want you to pay attention to is that initial cut, right? So in this case, this board had 39 stripes to, this panel had 39 stripes to, to a war, but there's a tie between nine records and only four more will get the, uh, the stripe. You guys following me on this one? I get, I'm getting some good numbers, okay? So what happened in the board that I sat on, the cut line, there were seven records that were tied at the cut line with one strike. So, that, so what they did is they reconvened this board. They brought us back together to, to look at the seven records for one strike. That was excruciating because we're essentially, I mean, we're, we're sitting there, we're just nitpicking. We're, we're looking at, okay, what level of education does this person have? This person, what, uh, do they have any deployments? Do they have deployment decorations? You know, we're getting really, really nitpicky uh, on these seven records for that one strike. Um, so it's hard, it's hard. Uh, this is why it's important to make sure you don't, we don't end up in this cut line. How do we make sure you don't end up in this cut line? Okay, it's writing clear APRs. Let's make sure your reports have a good word structure because you advance, you want, definitely wanna be on that 27, 26.5, 26, not be on that 25 point area where this slide uh, kind of shows you. Okay, next, uh, next slide, please. All right, uh, this was uh, the board president talked to us about some stuff. Um, you know, the board president is going to monitor the whole thing. It's usually a general officer. Um, they're going to go ahead, uh, make sure that, that we focused on chief staff, uh, formal charge, uh, that's quality review, all those things. So responsibilities of the board president. Next slide. <laughs> and this was the oath that we took. Very serious business. Something that, uh, when we were there, we did not take lightly at all. All right. Next, uh, next slide. Um, so this one, they, we, uh, we're, we're giving them the, the John Wick boy thumbprint, you know, do not, uh, do not, uh, disclose the proceedings of the board, do not contact individuals and things like that. Uh, and it was only the slide presentation that they gave us and what we can talk about after. Next slide. All right. And this is your opportunity. If you want to take a, uh, a photo of this phone number, uh, this is where you want to prod it to get your information. And this is who you call if there's any problems with your record. Right, your record, as it should be the promotion board, is sitting in Fada, and you can use these numbers to reconcile any differences. I'll leave that up for about another five seconds if you need to grab your phone and take a snapshot of it unless you already have the information. All right, next slide. Actually, that's the last slide too. We stopped. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, teammates, that was fast and that was furious. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go back through the list of items that I started off with, and then we can open it up to Q&A, all right? Hopefully, after starting off with the, the very small list that I had, going through the slides and not going back to the list, we'll kind of, maybe some of the stuff that we be open with will make sense just a little bit. So you always wanna to write to the rank that you wanna be, right? If you're a tech charge competing for Mass Charter, I need you to write your report like you're, like you're a Mass Charter. How do you do that? Use five keywords, led, managed, orchestrated, developed, oversaw, all right? Never, ever, ever say assisted, facilitated, helped. Those were kisses of death on a promotion record. That, that got you towards a 6.5, a seven, you know, with 7.5 being average, because if I'm talking about a tech going to master, you should be lead. 
you should be overseeing, you should be managing, you should be orchestrating. Um, tell me what your job is, how you do it, and what impact it, it uh, uh, comes from it. Uh, put your strongest CPR bullet on the back in your most senior raider endorsement and pull off. I think we covered at nauseum why that was important. Um, talk about, you know, if I don't read anything else about you, that last bullet should tell me everything I need to know about you uh, with respect to promotion and your EPR. Uh, think of your EPR as a system of records. It is your responsibility, teammates, and only yours to make sure that your record is accurate uh, and current. All right. So each time you, you earn a declaration, make sure it makes it into product. Your EPR, make sure after a month or two after a closeout, make sure you get back in there and make sure it's in product. Um, when you can tie in the NDS, do it. Jointness, lethality, uh, alliance, developing teams, innovation, tying the NDS when you can. Those, bu those buzzwords mean a lot to board members. Um, the same panel, so in eight R's, the same one colonel and two chiefs are going to review every single recruiting EPR that comes through that panel for that year. So don't get out of the business of copying and pasting and sharing bullets. All right, diversify your record, make your record stand out. Um, you will likely not have an AR on your promotion board. So it's important to write plain language. It's important to write in such a way that all board members on your panel are going to understand. So avoid career field jargon and acronyms, and at the maximum extent possible, um, try to limit the number of truncated words uh, that you're going to have in your EPR bullets. This makes it easier to read. No hoax mass bullets, big Tony Gold from Pet Peeve, right? Don't take three bullets and try to make them into one. Uh, education bullets should always highlight um, the benefit to your fellow airmen and to the unit as a whole. Uh, keep a living log of your EPR bullets. Uh, stay away from fluff, it's just wasted space. And then lastly, promotions are great, the teamwork and camaraderie, camaraderie are better. If you're chasing the stripe, you will end up frustrated and alone. All right, guys, that is everything I have for you guys. So we'll now spend uh, the rest of our time together today just kind of talking. Uh, I'll go ahead. The uh, questions are in chat real quick. Uh, and then um, unless, uh, I'm see it, unless you wanted to, to moderate that, I'll just go into chat with the questions. Uh, Chief, yeah, actually, actually, I can take it. Uh so first off, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, there's no doubt the information you delivered was uh, definitely helpful to a lot of people, including me. Um, I appreciate it. I think I got a couple of those kisses of death, <laughs> some of those things you mentioned. Um, but no, it's, it's great to hear, uh, you know, just different things that, uh, you know, I'm sometimes hearing for the first time. So appreciate it. Um, at this time, I'm, I'll definitely go through the chat and, you know, see if uh, anybody has any questions and I'll go ahead and read them out. So, all right. Um, so let's see here it says uh what is your board's thoughts about putting the award in the front of the bullet and then following regular format after um it's a little non-standard it's fine uh as long as it's happening towards the end of the, the report right now again um we have a great uh incentive and recognition program in recruiting so i mean there's probably going to be a couple of reports you can put more than one award into your epr I would say start off with your most significant award, put that in your most senior Raiders endorsement, and then work your way up. But also keep in mind too, um, a lot of our awards that we have in recruiting, the rest of the airport doesn't really know about them. So you may either need to quantify them or uh, do something else that's gonna be a little bit widely known. Like for example, um, Blue Suit. Uh, a lot of people outside of recruiting are not gonna know what Blue Suit is. But we know in recruiting, that's one of our most significant awards. You're essentially a 1208Y within recruiting, right? So you want to say that in some way, a diplomatic and humble way, you want to say that you were one of the 12 most significant, most successful recruiters in recruiting, right? Uh, so, you know, number one of X amount, you know, use your denominators and, and things like that. And you're All right. Uh, so next question is, uh, why does the score scale start at six? Yeah, I don't know. So th th it's <laughs> funny. It's funny math, man. Uh, I'll tell you, yeah, th this is an old PDG question that some of you might be familiar with, you know, right? You take the three raw scores 
you know, 7.5, 7.5, 7.5, whatever. It's 21. That's uh, 22, 22 and a half, right? Would be that raw number if you got 7.5 across the board. And then they multiply that by 15. I don't know why they do that. It does never made sense to me. Uh, I'm sure there's a good, smart reason why that is, but I don't know why they start at six and why they end at 10. I don't know. All right. Uh, next, uh, do team awards carry more weight than individual accomplishments as a senior NCO? Yeah, so it's funny. Um, I put a lot of stock in team awards, right? Especially if you're a flight chief, especially if you're an NCOIC, uh, especially if you're a squadron superintendent or a, a production superintendent. I'm going to put a lot of weight into a team award because I know if you're leading that team, it was your leadership that got them that award. Um, I would always probably prioritize an individual award over a team award. But I'd say both are equally as important. All right. Uh, is there a specific key leader initiative you would suggest we dedicate more of our time towards? Say that one more time. Is there a specific key leader initiative you would suggest we dedicate more of our time towards? Wow. Um, so I think what you're asking me, um, being a leader or a senior enlisted leader in our in our force what you should you focus your time on. Uh, if, if I heard that question right, and I, if whoever asked it, please, please feel free to come online and mess it up. Um, but your number one initiative should always be our airmen. Your number one initiative should be always be our airmen, their development, their utilization, their families. Because uh, if you're taking care of all that, they'll take care of the production for you, right? Um, right. And that's that. It's the people first mission always or mission first people always. It's kind of chicken and the egg, right? They go hand in hand. Uh, so I think what you're asking me, if I heard you right, the, the most impactful senior leader initiative that we should focus on, that should always be our end. If I did not answer that correctly, if I didn't answer your question, please, please feel free to come on. All right. Uh, next, if a big award is in the front of an EPR, but should have been in the back, does it carry as much weight when a board member evaluates it? Um, it, it, the weight of it should not change, but, um, I may not see it. I may not see it. Um, that's why it's important to put the most significant award in the senior Raiders box, right? Because I'm, I'm going to see that. And then also put in your decorations, right? So this is why decorations are important. Um, it's sustained spirit performance, right? So if you earn the Levito award from senior, uh, from Airman Leadership School as a senior Airman, you're probably not going to see it in your EPRs, right? When you're competing for a master sergeant, senior master sergeant, but I'll see it in your decorations. That's why it's always important to put that in your decorations. It's always important to put them in both places. Um, but that's an example I, vote, I give to the importance of decorations. I will read every single decoration. I may not read every line on an EPR. Gotcha. All right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, anyone can uh, go ahead and submit now. Hey, well, well, oh, yes, Colonel Martin. Hey, Chief. Hey, good, uh, good afternoon from here in uh, Los Angeles. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Martin, Commander 369. I just wanted to say thank you for uh, putting this on. Big thing for me is this is really the first job I've had where I've had to uh, – you know, well, as a commander, obviously, but even more so supervising and listening to look at EPRs, um, that sort of thing. So hearing this sort of thing definitely helps me out. And uh, I'm trying to learn the big things that I need to be cognizant of when we look at EPRs and uh, things for promotion boards. So that for the upcoming, uh, I guess, the master sergeant boards and the senior and CEO promotion boards, et cetera, I can better identify and obviously serve as a second set of eyes or a backup to my folks. Uh, what things need to be in EPRs and promotion boards to better uh, give our guys a chance to succeed for our promotion. So thank you again for putting this on and helping me to understand. I mean, obviously a lot of the same things that you mentioned before we, you, you're taught about officer uh, performance reports and PRFs, but obviously I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So you did point out a few things in there to definitely help me out. So greatly appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for those words. I wish I could take credit for it all. It was uh, Sergeant Turner and her team that put this on. I just have the, the, the privilege of being able to spend a little bit of time with you guys today. But thank you so much for that, sir. I really, really appreciate it. All right. So I don't believe we have any other questions that were submitted. So okay. I'll yeah, with touch on one thing real quick. So mm -hmm. one thing I did forget to mention. Uh, so next time you guys get a chance to look at an EPR, 
uh, either Air Force One 910 or 911. Uh, look at Section 3, okay? And then you know how the, uh, I'm looking at an EPR right now, right? So Section 3, Block 1, it's the first place you can start marking blocks. And then you've got this, you've got all this verbiage that none of us ever read, okay? It goes, it talks about mission accomplishment. It talks about what, what is mission accomplishment? What are the things that we're looking for in this block? And it breaks them down for them. So if you look at an, I'm looking at an Air Force from 911 right now. Uh, it's a senior NCO report. And in block three, section one, mission accomplishment, this is where uh, your first opportunity to put a, a, a check in a block. And it's the, it's the largest section of bullets. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bullets that you can fit in this block, okay? It talks about mission accomplishment. What is mission, mission accomplishment? It's resource utilization. It's team building. It's mentorship. It's communication skills. It's comply with Air Force standards. It's duty environments. It's, it's training, all right? This, what they're doing for you right here, it's a roadmap of the types of bullets they want to see you put in this section, all right? So when you when you were trying to find, uh, when you're trying to find a way to say the same thing eight different times or eight different ways, this is how it tells you how to do it, all right? So, the, the tests, the answers to the test are on the form. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, they want you to talk about mission accomplishment, resource utilization, mentorship, communication skills, compliance, core standards, duty environments, training. You know, so I can take and comply with Air Force standards. I'm not talking about a first charge and processing off the teams. I'm talking about are you a WIT member? And how many inspections did you do? Uh, communication skills. Did you write any papers? Did you did you speak at uh, an installation five six? Did you did you speak at a local community? Us as recruiters, you who have this outstanding training that recruiters have, are you investing that training in civil civic engagements? Are you speaking at different events? Are you putting on that awesome blue uniform, that huge Air Force Cooling Service cookie that we all get a chance to wear, showing that off, or a, a civic leader event? And are you briefing with that? That's the type of bullet I'm going to want to see in this section. All right. Sorry. Uh, so, to turn the phone real quick. All right. Uh, so it looks like uh, last question was, uh, does it mark down in the last three EPRs hurt you or do they see it as a personality conflict under the whole person section? Yeah, a great question. Um, so I will tell you when uh, under the old EPR program, um, with the old EPR form, the markdown was, was going to be pretty significant. It was, going to part, it was going to take you five years to recover from that. It was going to take you five years for that report to fall off. Um, I'll be honest with you, when I reviewed uh, EPRs on this on this specific promotion board, the EPR, the new EPR form was new, and people were misinterpreting how to uh, uh, navigate through the blocks on the form. I'll be honest with you, never even looked at the blocks. Never even looked at the markdown. Unless I got into that situation where I was, we were trying to uh, have one strike for seven different people when we were in that gray zone, we had that tie. Uh, that's the only time I looked at the markdowns because at that time, everyone was misinterpreting where to mark people down and who what, right? So at the time, I was a comm squadron superintendent and I had an operations superintendent. I kept marking down our airmen because they didn't have this one specific commercial. Uh, communications certification, and he was marking these people down for it. But there was nothing that said that he had to do that. There was nothing, there was no condition of employment uh, for them to have the certification, but they were marking people down. Uh, so that's why I share that story. Uh, and no, I didn't always look at the markdown on the So on the new EPRs, and we're still having that problem in, that air, in the Air Force. So to answer your question specifically, um, from if I was on, on, on your board looking at your record, I may not have marked. I may not have marked you down for having a markdown on an EPR, um, but also you've got to talk to your supervisor and find out why you're getting marked down. And then the personality personality conflict. Hey, that's a very real thing. And if, if that one markdown is sandwiched by two great reports where you have a record of sustained superior performance, I tend to give you the benefit of the doubt. Gotcha. Okay. Um, any other questions? Let's see here. Uh, how are the EPRs valued in regards to oldest versus newest points wise? Yeah, that that's uh, that. I'm not sure I understand your question. Are you talking about 
uh, senior NCO promotion record? Or are you talking about the promote now, the must promote? Uh, that's a so that's some funky math that's happening there. Uh, that I'm not, I'm still not sure I quite understand. Uh, if whoever asked that question wants to pipe up, or we can talk through that one a little bit more. Right, because I believe when the, the new uh, ACA came out, right, there was a different point value system for newer EPRs versus older ones. I believe they kind of tripled down. Yeah, I think the person asked a question might jump on. Yep. Yes, sir. I saw you interesting from 336. That, that's what I was asking. I saw a format that was sent out. I'm not sure if this was um, a legit form or not, but it says the first or the last EPR, most current EPR was worth 50 points and then it went, it went down um, as it, you know, the older EPRs. Yeah, so that, that is accurate. Now, I think you're talking junior NCO reports. Um, I don't think that that applies to senior NCO reports because your senior NCO reports gonna have an overall board score. Your master, so if you're a Texas Committee for master, senior or chief, uh, that's gonna be a board score uh, like, I've, like I've laid out. What you're talking about, uh, I think, is the, um, uh, the force distribution uh, with the promo now, the most promotes and the weighted factors on EPRs uh under the new construct so that is that isn't accurate the most current report has the most amount of points and it goes down from there and the, the reason why they did that uh, i can show you when, when they briefed it is um they wanted to value the experience that you had right now and what you were doing right now right um so it, it, it's, it was kind of the way that it was briefed at least the way that i heard it was it was kind of what have you done for me lately kind of deal right if you had a great year three two years ago i probably wouldn't have promote you on that record two years ago i wanted to know have you maintained superior performance i'm not going to argue the merits of that the rights and wrongs of that that's not my place to argue that um but i do believe what you read is accurate where the most the most current report carries the most weight and then it goes down from there copy all right. Any other questions at all? All right. Hey, Senior Turner, you're welcome. Hey, um, real quick, let me uh, go ahead and kick it out to my fellow chiefs here. Uh, I can see Chief Thompson on the line. I saw Chief Lynch on the line. Is there anything that I'm missing, gentlemen? Anything that you want to add? Hey, Chief, great brief. Um, the only, only two things. One is a foot stomp. Make sure every major award is in that decoration. Because just like you said, those EPRs will taper off. But those decorations, whether you get a deck when you're A1C or a senior master sergeant, they will all meet the board. So make sure those, those awards are in those decorations. And then the last thing, if we're writing to the rank that we want to be, how do we know what that is? that rank is right in the little brown book. So if you're a staff sergeant, read tech sergeant. This is what the Air Force expects of a tech sergeant and weave that information right into your EPR. So just like you said, Chief, it's an open book test. Everything that the Air Force expects of us is written down somewhere. We just have to capture it and put it in our own words. So that, that's all I want to share. Great brief, thank you. Hey Chief, that was awesome, thank you. Saw Chief Ladonley on here too. Hey, yeah, yeah, great briefing, uh, Chief. Appreciate your time, and and uh, you hit the nail on the head numerous times. Just be careful with uh, chasing those bullets to make yourself look a little bit better than you really were, right? And I know, um, like Chief said, you facilitate and led. Make sure that those bullets definitely are recognition, or or you're you're writing to what you actually did. Don't chase those stripes. Um, and then, Chief, if you don't mind answering this question, because this question I get over and over and over again, what's your your idea of a strat? Because a strat makes a strong record stronger. It doesn't make a weak record strong. Yeah. Yeah, so a hey, great point, Chief. Uh, I will tell you um, the stratification process is a very deliberate process, right? It's not something that's made up. It's not willy nilly. It's not we're just slapping numbers on records because we like the person. 
Um, at least that's not the way I view it. And I don't believe that that's the way our chiefs view it. And I don't think, I don't believe that that's what it was intended to be. Um, the, strat the, the stratification process builds an order of merit on the strongest record, right? So if you are the number one in an organization is because you have the strongest record. Um, number two, number three, so on and so forth. Um, it's not a, it's not a, this person's up next deal. It's, uh, it is absolutely built on order of merit on the whole person concept that you, you saw in the, in the slide deck that we already shared. And it shouldn't be a surprise, right? Um, so to answer your question, Chief, um, a board will see right through a stratification on a weak record. The board will see right through that. Um, the board will see, uh, will recognize, and that's why it's the hook, right? Uh, if I see a number five of 300 master sergeants on a record, I'm going to look deep, right? Especially if I saw that that person that was number five of 300, the previous year might have been 10 to 300, right? So I, now I see sustained superior performance, right? I see, well, I shouldn't say sustained superior performance. I see a track record of recognition and endorsement by the senior rate. Now that, that tells me I need to read deeper. There's there's stuff in this package I need to review, right? So that's that hook. Um, so to answer your question, no. Um, a stratification does not make a weak record stronger. Uh, a stratification validates a strong record. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. If anybody doesn't have any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. My teammates, uh, so I'll tell you, I don't know if that's my cue, but hey, thanks so much for this time. No. Um, I really enjoy these opportunities, really, in a lot of ways that I see this as uh, the essence of my job, right, is to is to share, uh, and, and for all the chiefs on the call, to share our knowledge, uh, our experience, what we've gained over time with all of you. This shouldn't be anything that we're hiding. This shouldn't be anything that's that we're hoarding for ourselves or people that we like. This is information to be shared by all and for all, right? Uh, I got the same briefing when I was a young, a young NCO. Speaking of young NCOs, uh, for those of you that aspire to be chief, you are building your record right now. As a staff sergeant, as a tech sergeant, you are building that record right now. Because again, uh, it's about sustained spirit forms over time. Uh, I can't I can't get you to chief if you're a tech sergeant right now without you being the best tech sergeant you can be. If you're a mass sergeant, I need you to be the best mass sergeant you can be, so on and so forth. So again, don't chase that strike. Do the best uh, that you can be in the job that you're in right now. The rest of it will take care of yourself. If you've got outstanding squadron superintendents, you've got outstanding squadron commanders, group superintendents, group commanders that are going to be looking at you uh, and expecting great things of you. If you deliver, you'll be taken care of. And when I say taken care of, you'll be recognized, for it, right? Uh, you'll have those opportunities to advance. So do the best and be the best at where you're currently at right now and the rest of it will follow in place for you. Sir, well, thank you, Chief. And uh, thank you to all the others that uh, also you know, gave some input. I really appreciate it. And uh, I think you covered quite a bit today. You gave people uh, an opportunity to, you know, to go ahead and make some adjustments uh, in time. And uh, you know, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, the Five Safe Council and everyone uh, here definitely appreciates it. Uh, we, should, we definitely appreciate your support and everything you do for us. And, uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Vice President, uh, Technical Sergeant Matt Davis. And uh, there you go. Hey, Sergeant Davis, one quick point before, before you take it. I'm sorry, Sergeant Davis. Hey, also, special thank you to our commanders and on the call. Uh, huge to see you on here. Uh, huge to, to, uh, to see uh, your interest, your passion for this process and for him. And thank you so much. Uh, Colonel Barton, I saw you. Colonel Henderson, I see you. Uh, thank you so much for being on this call. Okay, Sergeant Davis, over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So I just want to say thank you to Sergeant Baldenegro for taking a, taking the role right here today. Uh, I want to say thank you to Command Chief Goldstrom. You killed it. Uh, it's always amazing getting that information from the top down. And everything you told us today is definitely stuff we needed to hear. Uh, thank you to the other chiefs that stepped on and definitely gave out that good information as well to the commanders out there and anybody else that took the time to come on and hear some great information. Uh, if you want to hear this again later, we're going to go ahead and post it on the Ryzen or uh, the Recruiting Service 5-6 page. So definitely go on there. If you want to share it, definitely share it with your flights, anybody else uh, that would love to hear this information. I know it's some great stuff, as well as I wanted to throw this out there. 
we will have our general membership meeting this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So definitely, if you want to get involved with the 5-6 and all the stuff we're doing, uh, definitely log on there. Sergeant Nixon will be heading it up, so he's going to be full of energy. Uh, he's a rock star. So thank you, everybody. Thank you again, Chief Skolstrom, for everything you do for us uh, day in and day out. We really do appreciate it. And if that's it, we're good to go for the day. Thanks, everybody. Rock on. That's it. That went pretty well. <laughs> Good stuff. Appreciate everybody. Absolutely. Thanks, Nixon. No worries. No worries. One time. Bye. All right. Later. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Yeah, that went pretty smooth. That was good. <laughs> cool. All right, sir. We'll have a good evening. Thanks for stepping in. I know certain bold Negro, he was uh, had some computer issues trying to log in initially, so Wait. it worked out. He did well too. So Team right now. Good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it was smooth. We just transitioned. <laughs> Great. Good. All right. Well, y'all have a good one. Bye. Later.